What's going on everybody? This is Justin with me, myself, and Dice down at the mini painting desk. Thanks for joining me. I thought we'd do something a little different this time. I've been asked by several people about doing more of a tutorial painting video rather than my normal format. So I thought while we're playing Jaws of the Lion, I would paint the Red Guard and do a tutorial. I challenged myself to paint with as few paints as possible, so we're going to do this in seven paints, keeping the barrier to entry low. So let's talk paint really quickly. I'm going to be using Vallejo Model Color, Vallejo Air, and Citadel paints. I made sure that all of these were readily available. Vallejo Model Color is not sold by my friendly local game store, so, but they were all available at my local Hobby Lobby, and the Citadel was available at my local game store. If you don't have any of these paints, a good starter set I would suggest that's very affordable is linked down below in the description section. There is a Vallejo Model Color starter set. You will need a white, a black, a neutral gray of some sort, a silver of some sort, a mid-range red, a mid-range yellow, and a flesh tone. So our red guard here, if you look at him, is mostly red and black, with a little bit of yellow on the shield. So we're going to start with the black from Flame Model Color, and we are going to mix it in with the neutral gray. I have pictured several options for neutral gray. Dawnstone is another one that I would choose. Mechanicus Standard Gray is a little bit darker than I would want, but it would work fine. So we're going to put a drop of black and a drop of neutral gray on our wet palette. If you don't have a wet palette, there is a link below for the one I used. It's the Army Painter one. It's very affordable. It's lasted me well over a year, and that is a viable option. But you can make your own. All you have to do is get a shallow lid to like a Tupperware container or a takeout dish put a wet paper towel in it and cut a piece of parchment to go over it. Parchment paper will let water seep through and that'll help you with this project because we're going to be mixing a lot of paints and you may have to go back and forth a little bit. Now I've mixed some of that gray into the black. I don't want to paint straight black because then if I need to darken anywhere uh, there's nowhere to go. And black really hides the details so a darker gray will help some of the details pop when you're looking for them to highlight and then we will highlight those details so that they pop even more later so i'm hitting all of the underarm areas and his gloves this is like a body glove and it seems to come out from under everywhere so just nooks and crannies it doesn't matter if you're neat or not you don't have to be and I also paint the back of the shield because nobody's going to really see that. And I'm going to go ahead and paint the chain. And this is to help us with finding out our highlight values. So I'm covering all the chain in this dark gray that we made. So the key to mini painting is thinning your paints. We're just using water, nothing fancy. I don't want to add any more expense. I want to keep this as cheap as possible. But you'll see when I mix the paints, I then go and I dip my brush off screen into water and then continue to mix them with the water. How thin do you make them? You'll see me keep marking on the back of my thumb. It's a very thin, translucent mark. Uh, I also, after I grab paint, tend to drag it just lightly on a paper towel. So thin your paints where you will lose the detail in this miniature specifically because all of the detail, especially on the breastplate, plate, is very shallow. There's not a lot of raised edges on that and you can lose it really easily. We're going to move now from the dark gray to the mid-tone red. I'm using the, the flat red from Vallejo model color. You can use any of these reds would be fine, so something in this range here. But we're not going to use the straight red right now. We're going to mix some black into it. We're going to desaturate that red into a pretty dark maroon color. And we're going to cover pretty much the rest of the model in this. We are going to avoid his face, and we're going to avoid his horns. But other than that, we will put this paint on everything. It will take two to three coats. Red is really finicky and you would rather it be too thin than too thick. So several layers 
and thin paints. we've gotten red everywhere but the horns and the face we also need to block in the shield with a neutral gray so straight up neutral gray here and it's okay to paint the emblem on there the sun emblem because we're going to paint over that with yellow and yellow is another finicky color so you get to experiment with two of the most finicky colors that are usually in a paint line. We're then going to take this neutral gray and block in some color values on this weapon. I'm painting that neutral gray on just the top and back of the curve, leaving the bottom that dark gray that we did, you see me pointing, and then the tops and sides of the chain. So basically anything that you can hit without turning the model over. The model, when you turn it over, should still be that really dark gray. I then want to take the neutral gray and I want to hit the areas on his thighs that are exposed. So not anything you have to reach for and then the exposed part on the back of his calf for his right leg. All of those just need a touch of that neutral gray just to start the highlight there. After that we're going back to our midtone red straight up no mixing anything into it we're going to hit the face and the horns and we're going to start our highlight on the top of his head we want the horns in the face to be brighter but we also want the top of his head to be brighter so i'll take this and use it on just the top of his head to start building up a highlight there So 
here with highlighting the helmet, I am leaving the bottom of that curve and the part that comes down the back of his neck, that darker color, the deepest recess of that helmet. I do take it on the side and try to catch some of the face mask detail. There's not a ton of it, but there's some that goes around his face. I caught that. And also the bridge of his nose. It will dry darker than his face because it is so thin and mixing with that darker red. And here I add a little more water to our original dark red. And while the horns are still wet, I drag some of that onto the horns and then I pull it straight up and mix it with the red. And what that does is it gives us a gradient from the bottom up. So we're doing a what's called wet blending. We're wet blending the darker value into the lighter value where it's lighter on top and darker at the bottom. And here we have a really good daredevil look. Really dark red, some black, some good highlights. This is a great place to stop. Nobody will fault you for stopping here. This is a decent tabletop presence. You can paint the base and call it good and many people would be happy with that. But if you want to continue on, we're going to mix a gradient using the white and the neutral gray. And the way you do this is I put them decently far apart and just keep mixing them back and forth. And when I lift my brush, I'm going to get water after I've mixed them and I smooth out that gradient. And then I work my way down the gradient from the darkest to the lightest. So again, I'm coating the top of his weapon. I'm not going quite as far down the back as I did. I'm doing the inside. So when you look down onto the model, this is going to be anything that we can see from a 45 degree angle at the model. here the tops of the hands the inside of the palm the top of the thumb this will all just make it pop a little more and make it look more realistic on the table I'm highlighting here the top I'm highlighting here the top front of those under plates you want just a smaller area than what you highlighted before every time you highlight you want to cover less and less of that area because you don't want to completely cover up the tone that you put down before. That will help sell the realism of the highlights being from light and not being from paint. I'm also going in and lightening the sun emblem on the shield. That way it'll take that yellow paint even better. And I'm doing a little bit of block highlighting on the top portions of the shield going a little less each time and that will help me know where to place my shadows when I do my silvers. Working our way up that gradient of gray to white, doing less and less each time. So even on the thumb, and the top of the hand, I'm doing a smaller stroke than what I did before. Now, under highlighting these panels of the shield is completely unnecessary if you want to mix silver but if you are going to water down silver and paint that over top then I would highly suggest doing some of these highlights on these panels because the silver will allow that to show through. of that gradient. I'm not going to go to pure white 
I want to stay in the grays, so this is as far as I want to push my highlights. So doing just the very top and tip of that hook and picking out the raised areas of this chain. flat red and the neutral gray. You'll see I'm mixing the two together, building a little lighter towards the gray as I go along, almost to a purple. And then I go get water and I mix the water in, smooth out those transitions so that I have good areas to pick from. You want this really thin as highlights. Your base coat can be thicker, your highlights need to be really thin. So you want to go everywhere here but the deepest recesses. So anything that you can see, again, from about a 45 degree angle, you want to hit that with this highlight. And this looks purple compared to the undercoat, but it'll actually dry darker than what it looks like going on wet. you hit the underside of this cape, which you could leave dark, but usually my general rule of thumb is I have to reach in there for the first base coat and get everything. But for this first highlight, I don't need to reach. If I can't reach it just by barely sticking my brush into that area, then that needs to be with the deepest shadows. come to the folds of the cape and this just takes some practice. Generally I want to hit the top of the cape. I don't mind slathering with this highlight. It's the lower deepest recesses of the cape that I want to leave. So starting about halfway down I start to split my highlight up whenever the folds part. So you'll see lines where I've left it. And again, this does dry darker than it looks right now. You can see here how dark it dried and where I left my darker recesses. It's easier to see once it's dry. You do want to let these layers dry before you go to the next highlight or you'll tear up the work you've done before. It dries pretty quickly though, so it's not a long wait. So here I'm working my way down the gradient. I've picked the next highest color of red and I'm going back and painting smaller areas. Definitely a good tip is to run the side of your brush down the shins 
from the knee to the top of the foot. That makes an excellent highlight on this model. going to teach you a huge trick. So you saw when you use gray or white to white and red, it turns into purple and pink. So if you want to avoid that, use a flesh tone. Flesh tone is actually a fantastic way to lighten colors. The more peach the flesh tone, the better. And you'll see here as I'm mixing it up, it just makes more of an orangey red rather than a pinky purple red. We're going to use this on the horns and the face, also on the little skirts coming out from under his cape. sticking to his horns, I'm also going to do his tail, is because I want that wet blend. I want them to blend together and get a smooth transition while the paint's still wet. And that's easy to do working with a gradient. That's one reason a wet palette is fantastic. You can move quick, you already have your colors gradient out, and everything's still wet. So here I do the top of his tail, and I work my way starting at the top of that peachy red all the way down to the bottom, covering less and less area as I go along. Here you can see on the tail since it's a little bigger that working with this wet paint and working quickly over wet paint, I can work my way down the gradient and get some really, really smooth transitions from the darker to the light as I move along. brightest highlight I thinned it actually even more and you'll see me I use my thumb here since it's all wet paint and smooth that transition even more and it really just makes a really clean highlight. cape is dried and I've finished with the peach highlights, I'm going back and adding a little more water, a little more white to that flat red. For my highest highlights, I'm going to hit the top of his cape and his back. I'm going to make a little triangle basically on his back to keep that deep recess. And your best friend is the side of your brush. You can catch those edges on top of the folds and just ride down them. And you'll see me going up here towards the top is because where you lift your brush up is going to leave a pigment deposit. So even on the flatter areas where I'm going around them, I'm using the side of my brush. So 
So knowing where to hit your last highlights is typically the hardest for beginners. And it, it takes a while to master, and I'm nowhere near mastering it. But you want it to be your smallest highlights. My rule of thumb is if I look top down at the model, anything that sticks out deserves a highlight because the light source would be hitting it. And then anything that I want to draw attention to, like the little spikes on his thighs coming out of the skirt, and I draw a little line down the front of the skirt because that would be the peak on the curve. So anything I want to draw attention to that makes sense, and anywhere that I would think the light would reasonably hit it. There we go. We have finished highlighting the grays and the reds. We have a good looking model. We want to get some yellow on this. I'm actually going to start with Averland Sunset. I had it handy. It goes on a little easier than the Uriel Yellow that I'm going to actually use as my base. So you can skip to your mid-tone yellow. I just wanted to start with a little bit darker just to build it up. It really is covered up later. And here I'm going back over it with that Uriel Yellow. Again, it is a very thin paint even before you water it down. And I'm going over and catching all of the parts of that sun emblem. I'm adding a little more white and a little more water to my Uriel Yellow and going back over the upper parts of the Sun Emblem. I'm going to leave the bottom spikes alone just because they will be in shadow. It's an easy, easy way to do a highlight and a little light on this with the yellow. going to start into our silvers and I use the Vallejo model air silver there's tons of silvers you can use what I'm doing is you can skip this step if you just water down your silver and you did the blocking out of the highlights and shadows with your grace if you didn't this is actually I think a better way to highlight and shade by actually using the silver itself the silver is really thin, especially watered down, so if you mix a pigmented paint like a black or gray into it, you can create a mid-tone, a highlight, and a shade. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm doing a little bit of overkill, but I'm doing both to show two different techniques. And you can find which one works best for you.
this is an extra step. The model is definitely tabletop ready. It's looking fantastic, but if you want that extra little bit, I really like my weapons to not be gleaming. I like them to look used and using some Nolan oil or some strong tone or dark tone, some sort of dark wash over silver really makes it blend into the model and seem not out of place. So I'm using that here. It also brings out the recesses and makes the chain links a little more defined. And it adds just a little bit of tint and tarnish to the layers of the shield without diminishing all the work that we put in. Last thing you want to do here is paint the base. Most people use black. I'm using German uniform gray. It's very, very dark gray. Essentially black. I just like it a little bit more, but this is what makes your model feel finished. It's what makes it really pop from the base. And then you want to varnish it. I use Tester's Dull Coat so that it doesn't have any gloss to it and it doesn't ruin your paint finish. But if you're going to be handling these a lot, then you definitely want to put a varnish on it. A little bit more extra credit here. I've done this in several of my painting videos, but if you're new, I thought I would show this again. The easiest basing in the world. This is from Geek Gaming Scenics. It is a pre-made basing. You just take some PVA glue, in this case Elmer's glue is what I'm using, and you dip it in there and it makes the base ready. I'll leave a link to this in the description below as well. I use this all the time. It's quick, it's fast, and it always looks great. You can play around with it as much as you want or as little as you want. You just paint some glue on, dip it in, and man, it just takes it to the next level. And here he is, our red guard from Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. You can see his highlights, you can see the depth and the recesses. He's looking really good. And really this only took me maybe an hour to paint, and it would have taken me a lot less if I hadn't been filming. I think you could easily, even the first time, knock it out in an hour. Don't worry about messing up, it's your piece. You can stop whenever you want, but you could easily have this onto the table looking really good as your first miniature. If you enjoyed this content, please think about hitting that like button, smashing that subscribe button, and tapping that bell icon so that you don't miss any future videos. Did you find value in this content, in this tutorial video? If so, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you learned, what you liked about it, and if you're interested in more of these more tutorial style videos, going forward in the future. Lastly, you'll see a link on the screen right now. We're running a giveaway. It runs until the 7th of December. Watch that video for details. And as always, thanks for watching. And until next time, happy game.